Okay, so I've been given a Nest Pi 4 RetroPie case uh, by Retroflag, and uh, I'll put a link in the description to it. I saw videos on this a while ago, and uh, I saw it and I thought, oh yeah, it looks pretty decent. And uh, I never actually watched a video and didn't really look too deeply in it because I've been so busy doing videos, I, I kind of brushed past it. And since I've had it, I can't believe how good it is. And there's a few things that make it amazing as a Raspberry Pi 4 case. The attention to detail in this and also the functionality is incredibly well thought through. So let's go through a few of the bits that come with it. So it comes with a three amp power supply uh, with a US plug and also a European plug. I didn't get a UK plug, but it's very easy to use an adapter. Uh, it comes with, uh, there's some little gold Raspberry Pi stickers in here. Uh, and this is a micro HDMI to standard HDMI adapter. Uh, a load of screws. I haven't screwed this together because I want to take it apart and show you what it's like inside because that's the exciting bit. Um, the instructions, basic, but actually super easy to follow. There, there's no issue with that. Um, it didn't take very long at all. One note, uh, remove the SD card when you put it in the case. So the really exciting thing about this case is in the lid. So if I open this up, you can see there's a physical hard drive in there. And this is a 750 gig hard drive with Damaso's build of RetroPie. And uh, it is excellent. I've got other videos on the Damaso build if you wanna know more about it. But uh, the reason I, you can see my drive isn't in a cartridge is because this particular drive is actually too big. Now some drives fit and some drives don't. So this is a 60 gig Kingdian, which is the right size to fit in here. And I haven't even put the screws in, but it fits and it slots in and slots out perfectly fine. But I have actually found, if I take this apart, that not every drive is the same thickness. This is actually thinner than some of the other drives. Uh, and I found also some of these drives uh, kind of, because, I guess because they're cheap, they bow out a bit because they're slightly proud and that means that they don't actually fit in the case. If they don't fit in the case, it's not really much of an issue because at the back of this lid is actually a USB 3 to SATA adapter. So there's a SATA connection in there. Now I'm not gonna take this out because I'm happy to have my 750 gig drive in there. Uh, I can always add extra storage from the front two USB sockets, but this is in there and it's not coming out. Uh, obviously I can get it out, but it's not coming out on its own. So uh, I don't need it in that caddy and I'd rather have the much bigger storage of a physical drive, especially as I don't think it makes much difference on performance on RetroPie, certainly from what I've found. I have seen other reports that an SSD offers a lot better performance, but it hasn't really translated into what I've tried. So I've covered the lid, USB 3 to SATA built in there. Now you, to get a good compatible Raspberry Pi USB SATA cable, you're probably paying six or seven pound anyway, but to have it built into the device is excellent. Okay, so let's have a look inside. So you can see I've got a Raspberry Pi 4, four gig in here. Uh, this has got a heat sink on it with a fan. Uh, and that's gonna keep it nice and cool. Uh, I've got an ethernet cable here, which goes to the outside port. We've got a couple of USBs to do with the uh, USB connections on the front, um, but also I've got another port which comes out, which is the SATA connection, so the hard drive or the SSD, which I've just shown you. Uh, on the front, we have power and also reset. There is a little switch in here, uh, which is to do with uh, a safe shutdown. Now I've not bothered with that because I'm happy that I shut the Pi down in the right way and then I'll turn it off. But I guess if you had kids using it or something like that, then uh, it could be a way of uh, not losing data if, they're, if they just turn it off like they would do a normal uh, NES or something like that. So on the back, we've got the two micro HDMIs and the audio connection, which is going directly into the Pi. Uh, but then the power, the USB-C and the Ethernet is actually on an, a, a different board, which is being transferred over by these cables. And then the micro SD slot, which uh, is just to put your nail in and pull it out. If you put a micro SD in here, it will boot from the micro SD. So if you wanted to run Raspberry Pi OS or Twister OS or something like that, or Ubuntu uh, from a micro SD card, you can. But if you want all your games to be on the hard drive, then you can also do that. So it will always default to the micro SD card. Uh, and this is great for me because it means that I can leave 
this 750 gig drive in there so this is now my retro console uh, because it's just the easy way of doing it and uh, if I want to run an operating system from it I can and it's nice that all the connections are on the back so on the front we've got the power button and the reset uh, and then we've also got these two USB connections which is really handy because it means all the connections are at the back uh, and so it's a nice tidy setup sometimes with the Pi with the cables coming out in all directions it does look very untidy this really sorts that out and there are six very long screws that connect this all together so I'll put it all together pop that in make sure that goes in nicely so it feels nice and solid it feels like a console you would buy the, the, the build quality and the attention to detail is amazing so let's get it booted up okay so let's plug in my wireless mouse and keyboard adapter, my Xbox 360 controller. I've already got an SD card in there with Raspberry Pi OS on it. Uh, and because that's in, it won't boot from the hard drive. I just want to show uh, how it works, basically, and how you would set it up if you wanted to install RetroPie. Uh, so let's plug in my HDMI and let's switch on. So I can switch over to screen capture now that it's all booted up. If I want to write an operating system to the hard drive. I already have, but this is just to show you how it works. So the hard drive is already in there, but it's not booting from the hard drive. It's booted from the micro SD card. So if I wanted to put an operating system on a hard drive that I've put in there, and you generally don't need to format the hard drive or anything like that, uh, go to Accessories and Imager. If you haven't got Imager on your version of Raspberry Pi OS, I think it comes installed, but if you haven't, I'll link to a video that shows you how to install Imager. And then you can choose your OS. And so RetroPie is one of them. The RetroPie I'm going to use for my video isn't the same one as this. Uh, I'm using Damaso's build, which uh, is basically uh, comes with a load of ROMs and videos and information and things like that. But uh, if you want just standard RetroPie and then you supply your own ROMs, uh, basically you can click on that. Uh, pick the one you want, so in this case it'd be Raspberry Pi 4, choose your device uh, and you can see it's found my 750 gig hard drive uh, and then, and I won't do it, but you would hit write. Alternatively, uh, if you were to go to a website such as Arcade Punks, you could download an image uh, like the Damaso build. I think there's a bigger one than mine, so mine's the 200 gig build. Let's try it. So, yeah, this is the Arcade Punks website. You would go to front end downloads, go to Pi 4 images, and you can see here, well, have I, well, Nostalgia Trip to Masso. There you go. So that's the 128 gig version, and this is the 200 gig version that I've got, and you would download it from there, and you can still use Raspberry Pi Imager to write that. Again, I've got videos on Damaso's builds and various other builds. There is a huge one here, yeah, there's a 512, which I keep meaning to try, but the Damaso build I really like, and you'll see why I really like it in a minute when I boot it up. So let's close that down. And the way you would write Damaso's build or a different build uh, would be to go to Operating System, Use Custom, navigate to where your build is, click on it, and it will install from there. So let's close that down. Let's also show you, uh, because I've already got Damaso's build on this hard drive, this is the boot partition, so this will be where I would overclock. And let's go into config.txt and see uh, what the overclock is on this. So, yeah, down the bottom here that we've got over voltage of 4, arm frequency is 1750, and GPU frequency is 620. Uh, I don't know why over voltage of 4 is in there twice, so let's delete one of those. Uh, let's go for over voltage of 6 and I'll just go for 2000 and 750. So I've basically increased the overclock. The stock for the Raspberry Pi is 1500 uh, and there would be no over voltage. The over voltage is needed when you're putting more power. Um, so as you overclock higher, you need to up that overclock, but obviously overclock at your own risk and the GPU frequency is to do with graphics. So let's save that. And the reason I can save it in this way is because I'm using Raspberry Pi OS, but I'm changing the config.txt on the hard drive. Uh, so it's not the operating system that I'm using, but it will be in a minute. 
So let's close that down. So now all I need to do is shut down the Pi and remove the SD card. So log out, shut down. Okay, so that's off now. I've, uh, I can take out the micro SD card. So that's what was booting Raspberry Pi OS. So now the only thing we've got in there is the 750 gig hard disk. So let's switch it on with that. Okay, so this is how Damaso's build starts up. Uh, you can change the theme, uh, but I've got other videos on this uh, that show things like that. Um, but also, if you want to add any of your own ROMs, you can see how many ROMs are on here. So 1218 arcade games, Neo Geo 140, a Thomas Wave 12, uh, and uh, sort of more well-known systems. Commodore 64, well, I think I put those in, 22 games. Uh, NES and NES hacks, this is quite appropriate because Obviously, this is on the NES. Uh, so if I go into NES and I scroll down, uh, you can see on the left-hand side at the top, the video starts playing. Uh, it also tells you a bit about the game as well. So if I do 1942, we'll get a bit of gameplay video. I can flick down through. Uh, if I press uh, X, I can do random. So basically, it's going to pick a random NES game. Uh, so here you can see Little Mermaid, Rad Racer, 1943, Dungeon Magic, and if I go back from that, so Nintendo Hacks is interesting because these are games that have either been altered or added to or completely changed, uh, and something like Donkey Kong Country 4, which didn't come out on the NES, uh, so you can see a pirated port of Donkey Kong on the, on the snares made by Hummer Team in 1997, so if I click on that, Here we go, 1997 Hammer Team. Turn the music down a little bit. So this would be a game that you couldn't have played on the NES, but it's been created to be able to play on an NES. Oh, nice start. Jump must be B, yeah. Now if I press uh, Start, Select and Home, that takes me back to that main screen. And if I go back from there, uh, I can show you some of the other systems that are on there. So Super Nintendo, 783 games. Again, hacks for Super Nintendo. So there are all sorts of things on here, again, that wouldn't have come on it. Or they've been altered or changed in some sort of way. N64. And you can see the star ratings for some of the games. Again, if I leave it, it will play part of the game. So you can see a little bit of a video. So you can see what sort of thing you're getting. Even some of the handhelds are on here, so Ordinary Game Boy, Game Boy Color, uh, and as we go up, uh, so Nintendo DS, and these would be games I put on, so you can see there's no artwork and there's no text. You can put it in yourself, um, but uh, Damaso's build, the ones that come with it are already there. Uh, so PC games, PC Engine, uh, and it even does PlayStation very well, PlayStation Portable very well, PlayStation Portable Minis. I think I might have added these. I can't remember these come with Damaso's build or not. No, maybe they do. And uh, so one of the more recent systems would be Dreamcast, and Dreamcast is very well emulated on here as well. So Daytona, Dynamite Cop, which I think I might have added one of these. Jet Grind Radio. So if you want to add to this, let's go back to the main screen, uh, you would boot up the operating system from Raspberry Pi OS like I did at the start, and you would have access to the hard drive, and so you can copy things over from a USB stick, uh, download them from the internet. Uh, I've got a NAS drive which I keep a lot of my ROMs on, I could copy it over from that. Okay, so as you can see, the NESPI case is great. Uh, it's, uh, it's very, very handy for this particular build because it's got uh, the ability to have a hard drive or an SSD, so you've got room for all these extra ROMs. But uh, anyway, I've got plenty of videos on RetroPie. Uh, I'll link them all in the description. But thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.